Hi, uh, I'm starting my walk today at the gateway to Hugglescote. Um, I ended one of my other walks of Hugglescote uh, here, so we will now uh, continue uh, to discover some of the countryside around Hugglescote. We'll start by walking uh, down towards the Hugglescote surgery. Um, our surgery um, and also you've got uh, Mason's chemist and uh, pharmacy there but now we'll turn right uh, down Blackham Road which is um, a new estate called um, Hastings Manor This uh, certainly built uh, over the last 10 years. Uh, we've lived here about uh, oh, 12 years now, I think. And uh, this was a uh, completely a field before when we arrived. Uh, people used to do some dog walking in the field here, etc. But um, We'll see today how the new developments that are uh, being built around Hugglescote are blending in with the countryside. So we'll go down here and have a look at what's happening. So here you've got um, little river down here and a play area they've um, tried to manage all the um, water um, it's quite been a big project to drain the uh, meadows uh, making them suitable for building on for the long term so they've put lots of uh, infrastructure in to uh, cope with that so we see that um, this green space is certainly um, managed very well and very nice uh, for the uh, homes that uh, overlook uh, these uh, amenity spaces are uh, got a nice view uh, makes it uh, very pleasant to look out of your windows and see a nice view uh, we can see the stream down there Very pleasant but we'll walk on up Blackham Road or by the side of it anyway towards uh, the old railway line nice little spot here with the bulrushes in this marshy spot but we'll go on up to a new path they put in which links this uh, green space uh, to the footpath that uh, goes over the railway line here we are well this is uh, Pleasant, isn't it? Now, the top of this little footpath now, crossing over Blackham Road again, and the footpath continues. To the uh, 
steps that uh, go up to the top of the old railway track. Oh, we've got a style to negotiate here. Looks very good. Nice little gap for the dogs to go under as well. Well, now we've got this, uh, these steps, which uh, look to be originally made with uh, railway sleepers or something very similar. Wonder what we see from the top. That's a nice view, isn't it? That's the uh, River Sense, which um, is sort of broke its banks a bit uh, this time of year. We're in January 2022. And then we look to the right where the railway used to be uh, going down towards Edistown direction and that's where the old Hugglescote railway station was down there a few hundred yards at the uh, uh, bottom of Station Road. As we look back um, where we've walked already you can see St John the Baptist Church which was built in 1879 and the outside of the building is constructed of barden stone which of course is very near here also to the left of st john's church is dennis street which is uh, probably part of the original medieval village of hugglescote well now we'll walk down uh, the other side of the railway track and uh, go down into this meadow we've had quite a lot of rain recently so we're in the winter, of course, so. Just gonna have a look at the river a bit closer. It's quite a nice afternoon. They got some light cloud and uh, the sun keeps uh, breaking through from time to time, so. Quite good light. See the reflection of the sun on the water a bit there. Still quite a nice spot for wildlife. We're walking uh, up alongside the railway track in the meadow. Uh, Hugglescote, uh, in the census of 2011, uh, Hugglescote and Doddington Heath had around, well it was under 5,000 residents in under, uh, living in under 2,000 houses. Um, but there's been lots of planning uh, in the local plan, etc., to increase the housing stock. And there's going to be getting on for 3,000 new houses built um, over the next few years. The one we can see just up there 
is uh, Grange Meadows and that's uh, the estate is being built by Cadbury Homes I think they're been doing a bit of uh, research on the water levels um, in this meadow uh, to plan their drainage I'm not sure how far the houses will uh, come across the meadow eventually looks like there's a roofer over there putting tiles on one of the latest houses there there's lots of uh, families that have lived in Hugglescope for generations and uh, they'll know a lot more detail uh, about the history than I do as I said uh, I only lived here about 12 years so I found it very interesting to find out, find out uh, some of the the local history and um, it uh, makes it go get over these um, branches I've got me wellies on but they're not that agile they don't bend at the uh, ankles so there we are now oh, here's the train track again yeah so it's always interesting uh, here in the information from local people now you see the uh, track bed again now we're now we're going to walk across the bridge that um, spans Grange Road It seems they're they're going to leave it here um, uh, for this um, pathway, which uh, is very nice facility. Oh well, we've got a bit of uh, graffiti. Oh well, we can have a look over the the bridge see the entrance to the uh, new estate down there with all the flags and the Huggles Coat surgery behind the Huggles Coat railway station uh, closed in 1931 to passengers and then further along in 1951 it closed to parcel traffic and it was closed altogether in 1965 a little further on we'll be able to see some artifacts of historical environment significance uh, which will be interesting uh, this was the Ashby to Nuneaton Joint Railway uh, owned this uh, railway. To the right of the track um, we can see some of the new homes that um, are in Grange View and have been built by Davidson's Homes and as you can see um, there's a very nice footpath down there as well so they're trying to uh, connect the new houses to the countryside and um, let's hope it's uh, well managed and uh, a benefit to the the whole community the nearby South Leicester Colliery was in the parish until 1936 when a section of the area south of the River Sense became part of the new Ellistown Parish. Seams from the colliery ran under Hugglescout from January 18, 
1876. The local railway line served this colliery with its two original shafts being located near the old Fugglescote railway station. We're going to turn off to the right now and uh, have a little detour uh, through the woodland that uh, is of either side of the track. Well, this time of year is a bit different because most of the uh, leaves have come off the trees. Oh, some pigeons just flew off. And uh, that happened sort of in the autumn 2021. And as yet, uh, the new leaves um, haven't appeared. Uh, which is uh, not going to be long before the new leaves will come for the spring. So here we are in the middle of winter. Now it looks like there's a, a seat here uh, with a nice view across to Arden Hill there in the distance with its um, telephone, mobile telephone masts on the top uh, and also this side of the hill is a massive uh, quarry which they're still uh, mining aggregate of all different types out of and then we can see the meadows and Another pond, uh, this side of the um, Grangeview Estate by Davidson's Homes. Uh, obviously they're still proceeding over to the left there, building. I'm not sure if they're coming across this side or not. Time will tell. But at the moment... Um, it's a good balance. This area is listed as a site of natural environment significance, which uh, has the priority for wildlife and uh, woodland habitat. So hopefully that will protect these um, veteran trees, really, isn't it? Because I think this is a willow tree, but um, obviously it's very old. Uh, we can hope that uh, because this is uh, environmentally protected, uh, there shouldn't need to be uh, preservation orders on the veteran trees or the historic woodland. Uh, hopefully it will be managed well for generations to come. There's lots of paths that wind their way through this uh, ancient woodland with some uh, very nice trees. been here years and years. One thing these days, a lot of people uh, speak up for trees and nature because a lot of these things can't speak for themselves. Some say they do talk to each other through the root systems, but uh, who knows? 
as we pass this uh, veteran we can hear the bulldozers on the new housing estate just over the bank oh this one's really old isn't it wonder if they're going to link the two Grange View estates uh, across here it looks like um, <coughs> some trees have had to make way uh, so we see the railway embankment up there so as we climb back up the railway track we can view all the activity of one of the parts of uh, Grange View estate here we have the what's left of a track side cabinet which no doubt used to hold uh, sensitive equipment uh, for signaling or safety of the trains still the skeleton of it remains well this is a unusual artifact to find in the woods an abandoned motorbike or moped of some sort still got the forks there on the front and uh, part of the engine and the chassis and things must be a story behind that it uh, appears to be the final resting place we're really down into the heart of the woodland now um, and uh, We've got something strange here, an old uh, structure hidden in the woods. Looks like um, an old water tower. Um, the um, water tank is gone from the, the top, but uh, I would imagine that's what it is, um, considering how sturdy these um, concrete pillars and, and beams are. And it's even got the old ladder, which um, people used to climb up to inspect the there appears to be something else of interest here it's a big circle of um, stone I don't know if I can clear some of it away but um, yeah, clear some of it away here and see if we can see all these Oh, bricks and a, a circle. Um, there's a mossy wall down there with bricks and things. And, and you can see this circle of uh, very big uh, 
heavy stone going round in a circle. Uh, I wonder if that was a turntable once for trains or goods wagons uh, at one time. I don't know, there's probably somebody who does. What I think is the turntable is very close to this water tower, so you'd think it was a bit of a side-in or a uh, place to refresh the trains with water and coal perhaps. We've come quite a long way down the uh, railway track and through different uh, paths through the, the woodland and uh, we can hear all the building going on on the Grangeview estate. They're really cracking on there. Houses getting ready every other week, I would think, for new people to move in. Always surprises me how sort of muddy and uh, sort of awful building sites look like. And when they're finished, they're all neat and tidy and neat rows and grass and footpaths and lovely houses but this is like uh, the part of the Grange View estate nearer to Colville. Well we're just walking out of the last bit of um, woodland now because I'm hoping to uh, see some of the building work that's going on which uh, comes right up against the uh, woodland and uh, it's um, certainly once it's all finished will be uh, very um, uh, good both the housing facility for so many people to be able to live in here and also these nature facilities uh, to be able to have some exercise and leisure time. So we're finding a lot of fences here and obviously a uh, construction site and uh, we've got to keep out. But um, here we go. Uh, we can walk down this pathway. They seem to have left the public pathway open so we can uh, still walk through what used to be fields and meadows uh, not too long ago really so we'll have a look at uh, what's happening which is a complete contrast to that uh, uh, woodland and uh, things from the past of the colliers etc that were around here uh, a lot of the employment was coal mining if it wasn't agriculture but uh, we'll see something else about the uh, coal mining in just a little while I'm hoping so that's uh, towards the end of the video which we're approaching Now we seem to have got pedestrian crossing point. It's well organised, isn't it? Yeah. Big sprung gate. Look both ways, I suppose. Another gate over here. Not a work going on. Diversion. Wow, I see some houses that are nearly completed down there. Got all these rocks and things they found. I expect they'll be using that as, um, you know, part of the making things look nice, uh, sorted out. They move earth around and all sorts when they are doing this massive construction work. 
and then put it all back neat and tidy and it's finished looks like they're retaining this uh, hedgerow uh, to break up the estate just imagine that's uh, making uh, concrete or mortar over there in those machines ah, I've got some more red gates down here to cross over another road wow look at these houses going up over here Oh, man, it worked up there. Oh. So here is the six meter diameter headstock pulley wheel from Whitick Colliery, perched on top of that uh, big tire there. Whitick Colliery, which was demolished in 1987, and this wheel has been stored at Snibston Colliery Park until it was moved here on the 20th of August 2021. And we can now see the foundations that are being uh, formed here, very substantial, uh, which the wheel is going to be mounted on. Uh, also, um, these estates are being built by Barrett and David Wilson builders and uh, they're going to name 18 streets after some of the miners that were tragically lost their lives in a big uh, mining accident in this area uh, years ago. Uh, they'll probably be a dedication event when this wheel is finally mounted in position and the, these estate roads and houses have all been finished so we look forward to that perhaps later this year. The uh, disaster happened in 1898 and uh, so that will memorial will honour those people and uh, it also is in sight of St. John the Baptist Church in the heart of Hugglescoe. Looks like one of these uh, ponds are being created here. As we, uh, quite a big one, as we look towards those new houses over there just being finished off. There's just masses of amount of materials here, all these pipes for all the uh, drainage and infrastructure which is under will be underground it won't be seen when it's all finished all this uh, ground is uh, being prepared for the next stages of building work um, it's all rather uh, wet at the moment but uh, it's all in the big plan of things here we have one of the biggest ponds that's being constructed uh, they're called balancing ponds and they mimic the storage capacity of the ground prior to it being built upon and it's hoped uh, of course it will meet the challenges of climate change as time passes and also these green fences that are around the edge of the building site and around this pond are wildlife defences really like newt defences so um, the wildlife can't get in until it's ready for them so to speak and they will be um, landscaping the ground and uh, making it all very neat and tidy 
uh, with reeds and grass everywhere so we look forward to all these um, houses having new occupants and uh, uh, being happy to live in this uh, historic uh, medieval village of Hugglescote. Well, I've just walked back to the gateway to Hugglescote. Hope you've enjoyed the walk. Uh, for new people coming to the area, well, I hope you enjoy living uh, near to this, uh, the centre of um, old the old village of Hugglescote and. Uh, I'll put a link to one of the other walks I've done on Huggle Scout so you'll know a little bit more about uh, what's around here. So, bye for now.